carefree cooks practice the dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that chefs are taught in culinary school. That's who we are. That's the definition. But that means that you can cook any ingredient for any diet or any desire, but what if you can't figure out what to cook? And that's when you need my meal multiplier formula. I'm going to share it with you today on the Carefree Cooks Code. I'm Chef Todd Moore, and this is the Carefree Cooks Code, every Tuesday live at noon Eastern. Here's our challenge. How can home cooks cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride while ignoring recipes and still impressing themselves and others with what they cook? Well, the answer is found in becoming empowered with how cooking works, using dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that work for any ingredient, for any diet, and any desire, just like chefs do. And we'll know we've cracked it when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, their lifestyles, and their health through better food and cooking. This is the Carefree Cooks Code. Hey, welcome back to the Carefree Cooks Code, everyone. Uh, this is the weekly show for the methods, techniques, and insights into better food and cooking. We, of course, are live every Tuesday at noon Eastern. If you've missed any of the past episodes, just go to the archive on Facebook at chef at facebook.com slash chef.todd.more slash videos. It's simple. It's really easy to remember. Uh, and if you want to see what I'm cooking and uh, often describe how I did it, you can follow Chef Todd Moore on Instagram as well. That's where I'm posting photos because I'm a carefree cook. I create my own recipes. I bring friends and family together. Uh, I learn every time I cook. I create my own cooking style because I practice pro methods and I love my cooking. And that's just the way it goes. It's another Tuesday and I'm so glad we're together again. I, I mean, I honestly, I get so excited to see how many people show up for these live classes. And what that means to me is that the topics I'm teaching are helping you. The, the, the things that I'm talking about are, are moving you forward in your goal. And that's good because that's my goal. <laughs> that's my life's goal. Um, you might think this is weird, uh, but I actually sit around and try and think up new ways to help you take your cooking to where you want it to be. I, I watch some dumb TV program and I come up with an idea of how I can teach cooking to people, right? It kind of takes up most of my time. It, it's, it's in my head. It consumes a lot of my time, uh, mostly because I got a lot of different types of people to think about. Everybody has a different goal in their cooking. Everybody has a different goal in what they eat. You're either cooking for your health, maybe cooking on a budget, uh, cooking for your family, cooking for enjoyment and pleasure. These are all the different types of people I got to think about. And honestly, it gets a bit overwhelming sometimes, okay? And considering the fact that I've been teaching online since 2008, um, I owned my own cooking school that turned into web cooking classes in 2009. I've been a culinary college professor who's earned the highest educator status given, certified culinary educator. I've spent thousands of hours teaching cooking. So I understand your, your frustrations and goals better than most people. CCE guys like me, they stay in the university. I'm one of the ones that escaped so I can share all this with you. So few people understand your cooking challenges like I do. I've heard all of them on a professional level, uh, on a, a home cook level. I've heard them all. And these issues, they're so persistent. They are so prevalent. They're so preoccupying to cooks everywhere that I had to come up with a formula to solve all these issues. And look, it doesn't matter where in the world you are because you have the same challenges and concerns as everyone else does. Good food transcends all borders. But here's the thing. Cooking doesn't have to be a frustrating chore. And I hear from so many people that are stuck they are stuck in the same routines over and over again when it comes to food, cooking, and what they eat every day. Round and round and round. It's the same thing week after week. But 
I'm not making fun of you. You're not alone. That, that's the case for most people before they come to me, right? That is until they gain true freedom in the kitchen because cooking freely means that you can cook any ingredient for any diet or any desire because you are so confident in how to cook. And that's when people really start to enjoy their kitchens and start to express themselves, you know, or they take control of a dietary issue. Maybe it's not about expression. It's control of a dietary issue. It's improving their overall health. It's improving their relationships through better food and cooking, right? And that's where I want to take everyone to. That's the point that come with me. That's where I want to bring you to. But the only problem with this is that this can get really complicated, right? It can get pretty complicated to try and get to that point. I know that you've tried other ways. You've tried cookbooks and TV shows and, and classes in the mall store and, and things like that. And there's still a frustration there because there are so many things standing in your way. First is that most home cooks have been taught cooking all wrong but it's really not your fault. You were probably taught all wrong because your mom and grandma or grandpa, like my case, who might've been very good cooks, but they didn't know why they were doing the things that they did. They, they mostly did it because their mom or grandma or grandfather did it. Just kind of kicking the can down the road, you know? So it, tell me if any of this rings true. If you've been taught that cooking is all about time and temperature, all about how long you cook something at a certain temperature on the oven dial, well, somebody has left out a lot of information. If that's what cooking is about to you, time and temperature, there's a lot missing. Have you been taught to believe that cooking is all about following someone else's written instructions? I mean, be honest with yourself. If not now, wasn't there a time that you thought that it's not possible to cook something without a list of measured ingredients on a long scroll of confusing contradictory steps? At some point, I know somebody told you, you have to have a recipe. And this has been the basis of most people's cooking philosophy, but it's an extremely restrictive one. And these two ideas, the recipes and the time and temperature, those two ideas, <laughs> those are the ones that really hurt me. They hurt my heart <laughs> because people have been led astray for so long. And I feel like it's up to me to go around and clean up the mess. Cooking is not difficult. You do not need recipes to cook. You do not have to believe what your lying oven says. And you don't need a timer or a clock in your kitchen. You can cook any ingredient for any diet or any desire as long as you don't let those things get in your way. So here we go. Can we make a first agreement together here today? We really need to agree on this. If we don't agree on this, everything else I'm about to share with you today is gonna be absolutely useless. So. Can we please agree that there is way more to cooking than how long to cook something at a certain temperature just because the recipe says so, all right? Raise your right hand. Repeat after me. Here we go. I agree. I agree. I agree to look beyond the short-sightedness about cooking that's been taught in the past. If it's not wrong, it's short-sighted. I agree right hand, right? I agree to look beyond the short-sightedness that's been the way that cooking's been taught in the past. Promise with me today, I am going to consider something brand new. I'm going to consider a new way of thinking that will have me cooking with confidence and creativity from this day forward. You promise? Good. All right. We've all taken the pledge. We all got an open mind now. So let's get started. I've got some great information to share with you today. Actually, it's just a formula. Uh, you know, it's like an A plus B equals C thing. It's a formula. No, it's not a recipe. <laughs> it's a formula, not a recipe. Recipes have inherent variables that make them really impossible to duplicate. Formulas are automatic. They work every time. 
And ultimately, my goal today is to empower you to be able to just dream up an endless variety of really interesting dinners using dependable and repeatable methods that can then be turned into even more dinners by making a few simple substitution, right? So what I've got for you today is actually something very simple. It's my meal multiplier formula to get dinner done. You want to see it? You think it's cool? I wanted to take a sip of water and almost spilled it on me. <laughs> All right. Let's continue. Uh, this is actually something that I've taught before, but uh, today uh, we're going to uh, give it an update because I really had a revelation recently that made this formula even more powerful than I originally thought it was when I created it. And there are six elements to this formula that I've used when I was the executive chef of a large hospital. Uh, I've used this formula when I was creating wedding menus at my catering company. I mean, heck, I, I use it for dinner for my wife and I on a random Wednesday evening. The formula works for a thousand people and it works for two people. The formula works for everyday diets and it works for special diets. It works no matter what you have in your pantry or freezer right now, this formula is that powerful. And here it is. It's the fact that cooking methods plus a protein product, I'm gonna explain all this, plus aromatics, plus sauces and seasonings is how you can make up any meal without a recipe. It's that simple. If you want to be able to make up a meal without a recipe, this is what you follow. All right, now let me explain a little bit because <laughs> I could feel people getting a little overwhelmed right now with a six element formula. People are having high school algebra flashbacks right now. Oh my God, oh my God. All right, all right, all right, all right, right. Deep breaths. Here we go. In, out, good. Okay, this is really quite easy once you can categorize everything, because when you categorize everything, then you can just go ahead and plug everything in, okay? All right, you feeling better now? Good, all right, you're gonna feel much better in just a minute because I'm gonna make this even easier than that. I, I wanna make a quick illustration first, but then I'm gonna take the six element formula and I'm gonna turn it into a three element formula in just about 10 minutes. So that would mean that this is gonna get twice as easy if you stick around for it, right? Invest a little patience here. I know some people like Todd talk so much, but he brings it home. Trust me, <laughs> you, you get the point. A little patience and you'll get the value, okay? So let's get back to the longer formula here. And, and if you want a, a mnemonic device to remember it, it's C-M-P-A-S-S. -S. Those are the things that you need to write your own recipe. C-M-P-A-S-S, -S. call it Chef Moore, Pass, right? It's a way to remember something. C-M-P-A-S-S, -S, Chef More Pass. So let's go over it. First, it's all about the cooking methods. And there are really only three categories of cooking methods that you ever need to learn about uh, because there are direct heat methods, indirect heat methods, and combination methods. That's it. There. <laughs> Not so hard, right? Three things. No algebra. <laughs> Didn't have to freak out. Examples of direct heat methods are like saute, grilling, broiling, indirect heat, roasting and steaming, combination methods like braising and stewing. But in direct heat, this is where the heat is the most intense. And this is where most people cook at home. So for example, let's review the nine steps in the basic saute method. This is an idea of a method. So if you can repeat the nine steps in the basic saute method over and over again, then you can plug in the ingredients. This is the whole Carefree Cooks mantra, okay? So let's review it really quickly in case you, you're not a web cooking classes lifetime member or you need a review. Uh, the first one is pan hot first. The biggest mistake probably home cooks make is starting with a cold pan. Step two, fat hot any kind of fat, whatever is right for your diet. Step three, fat hot. Another mistake home cooks make. Don't start cooking until the fat is as hot as possible without smoking. Step four, add your protein product. Now, this is, I use this as a vague term. Yes, proteins like chicken, beef, fish, but also tofu, vegetables, any of it, your main product. We'll call it the protein product. 
Step five, cook 75% on the first side. You can watch the changes in the food as it cooks. This is why you don't flip it over so, so early. Most home cooks turn their food way too quickly. Step six, remove it to a plate. Set it on the plate. You don't need to fully cook the protein in the pan. You might have too much heat building up. You'll return it again later or maybe cook it in a combination method. Step seven is sauteing aromatics in the fond. Build flavors in that pan by adding onions and peppers and carrots, whatever you want to the rendered fats and flavors that are left in the pan. Use those flavors. Don't, don't wash the pan, for goodness sakes. Uh, step eight is deglazing, reducing, and thickening. Stop that intense dry cooking by deglazing with a flavorful liquid that's gonna become your pan sauce if you thicken it or reduce it. And lastly, return the item to the pan. Now now you can return your main product and you can finish cooking in the sauce you made so you never have something that's too dry, right? That's the idea. The basic saute method is the quickest, easiest, one pan way to get dinner done in 30 minutes. And it's the very first thing I teach in web cooking classes because having a dependable method of cooking makes the biggest impact in the short amount of time. And that's what I mean by having a dependable and repeatable cooking method. Because if you cook the same way each time, then you change the ingredients for a new meal the next day. It's easy. Uh, the third letter is protein in this formula. And I've ever explained that a bit. I use the word protein pretty much for whatever your main item is. Doesn't have to be chicken or beef. It could be a mushroom cap, tempa, falafel, pork, fish, shrimp, it doesn't matter. Choose what you want or choose what you have to eat for your diet. Next is aromatics. This is the category that gives like the back flavor to your cooking. That, that original saute of onions, garlic, ginger, those are usually the first three that people think of. But you know, again, a lot of people can't eat onions or garlic or tomatoes or things like that. So they always ask me what to substitute and I say nothing if you want, you know, just don't use them. Or switch to parsnips, carrots, celery, bok choy, daikon, you know, find the thing that you do like. And again, this is a formula, not a recipe. This is a formula where you get to plug in the foods that you want to eat. It's not what the recipe told you to go out and buy, right? Uh, the first S is for sauces. And I've just quickly run through how deglazing a pan can give you the foundation of a pan sauce when you use the nine steps in basic saute, but there's a lot of other ways to make sauces. Uh, I mean, a sauce can be as simple as simmering soy sauce or balsamic vinegar until the moisture evaporates, right? It condenses and thickens, it's a sauce, it's easy. Or when you discover how to thicken a liquid with roux or cornstarch slurry or tomato paste or pureed beans or soft cheeses or any of these techniques, you, you start to add flavor, texture, appearance to your dishes. Sauces, really important. And the last is seasoning. Here's the final signature on your dish. How you season the dish says a lot about what you're trying to create. And an Italian dish, we'll use my Italian spice team. Call them in, dude, Italian spice team. Come on, basil, oregano, thyme, you're up. Um, if it was chicken, might be my poultry team. Sage, thyme, rosemary, I, I got teams for everything. But the key to adjusting the seasonings in your dish really is simply tasting it and then figuring out what you want. I can't tell you if your dish is too salty, you know, in my mouth versus your mouth. So there's the long formula there. If you want to get dinner done following that, as you go through your pantry, how am I going to cook it? Which protein, onions or garlic? How do I make a sauce and what kind of seasonings? You never need a recipe again, right? This is fun, huh? You having fun yet? Spilled my water in my lap and on my keyboard <clears throat> as well. It was fun for me, it cooled me down a little bit. But is any of this making sense to you? Yeah, I mean, to me, I don't, I, when I look at recipes, they're all over the place, but this is a formula that you get to choose. And again, as a culinary college professor, a certified culinary educator, a cooking school owner, as the founder of a large cooking school, 
I can tell you this works. <laughs> it solves a lot of problems for a lot of people, but I told you I was gonna make it even easier because six might be too much for some people, all right? So I said I was gonna make this easier by cutting the formula in half, right? Half the formula seems twice as easy. Half as many things you gotta remember, even though you do still know Chef Moore Pass, C-M-P-A-A-S-S, cooking methods, proteins, aromatics, sauces and spices or seasonings. You, you're gonna remember that, I know you are. S -s -s Chef Moore Pass, okay. But because some people I know are having a problem with at least half of that long formula, right? Okay, there are three things in there I know that are bothering you right now because I've taught cooking for a while and I bet I know what they are. Wait, 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 don't leave. Don't go, don't, don't leave. No, please don't go. I'm gonna explain all this for you. Stay with me. You're gonna get the rewards. You're gonna get the answers to the stuff that's been bugging you because I know that you're thinking to yourself right now, gee, Chef Todd, you kind of brushed over a few things there, didn't you? I mean, really, make sauces? Sure, you know, I just whip up some sauces. Aromatics? How do I know which ones to use? Seasonings? I mean, come on, that's where I really need help, Chef Todd. You brushed over that pretty darn quickly. I mean, gee, Chef Todd, if your six-item formula has three things that are getting in my way immediately, how am I ever going to use it? Well, that's why I wanted to make it even easier. I wanted to get rid of those things that are bugging you. So I'm going to give you my three-item formula right now because those things that are really bothering you right now, the, the, the roadblock that you're at, it really comes down to one idea. I know what it is. It's creativity. I, I wanna show you how to get some creativity because here's the ultimate goal. To me, cooking becomes even simpler than six things. Cooking comes down to this simple formula, methods plus creativity equals endless variety. Now I want you to think about that for a minute because that's huge, right? I mean, that's huge to make it that simple. And I want you to write it on your kitchen wall or your refrigerator or something in permanent marker, all right? Not your erasable whiteboard. That's so non-committal. I want you to write on the wall in a permanent, per, <coughs> permanent marker. I want you to write methods plus creativity equals endless variety because here's the big epiphany that I had. I've been teaching cooking methods over written recipes since 2006, so when I opened my cooking school. And not everyone has gotten the message, but I know a lot of people have. And a lot of people all over the world, <coughs> Excuse, I hesitate to drink my water again. <laughs> a lot of people all over the world, I know they're starting to cook this way. So I'm getting the word out about cooking methods and I'm starting to feel good about this. But the endless variety thing, yeah, everybody wants endless variety, right? Everybody loves variety. Uh, I've heard it's the spice of life, no? So this is an easy one. I mean, that's the goal. The goal would be able to like, make burritos, right? Mexican burritos on Monday. Take your kitchen around the world. Indian tikka masala on Tuesday. Cajun etouffee on Wednesday. Stuffed pork tenderloin on Thursday. Make a better pizza than your pizza place on Friday. Get fancy with lobster Newburgh on Saturday and do a really nice chicken Parmesan on Sunday. There you go. And then, the chicken burritos become beef burritos or bean burritos or shrimp burritos. The tikka masala is made with tofu. It's uh, made with chicken. It's made with anything that you want. The etouffee goes from shrimp to chicken to and on and on and on, right? This is making sense to you, yeah? Everybody wants to be able to just roll these new ideas for dinner right off the top of their head like I do. Do you have any idea how many menus I must have written over my career? I mean, I cannot possibly imagine how many combinations of cooking methods and creativity that I've had to dream up in all these years. I ran a very large business dining cafeteria at the National Security Agency. I planned menus for a large hospital across eight diets. I wrote wedding menus, birthday menus, anniversary menus for my catering company, and it's all because I have this simple method in my head. It is methods plus creativity equals endless variety. It's easy to practice the methods, and everybody wants variety. So this is the rub. How 
do you get the creativity part? How do you know what goes with what? How do you know which cooking method to match to which ingredients? How do you know which aromatics and which seasonings? This is where it does become a bigger problem <laughs> than, than a three-line formula. And these are the creativity questions. These are the ones that I want to help you answer today. Because if you want endless variety in your cooking, and you can easily become empowered with the basic cooking methods, then all you need is for someone to show you some new ideas that sparks your creativity. Watch what someone else does and copy them. That's the best way to learn. They call it mirroring. Find someone successful at what they do and mirror them. Then you start to recognize, hey, that's me in the mirror. I can do that too. And if you watch what I'm doing when we do all these lives and stuff, then you can do the same thing that I do. Or don't do what I do. Do what you do. Do what you want to do. You do you, I do me. I do me, you copy it, you do you, I don't know, right? <laughs> Whatever combination. But that is how you solve the creativity part. To get dinner done, apply a dependable cooking method to the ingredients that you dreamed up with your creativity or saw somebody else do. And that's when you are knocking it out of the park every night of the week. You're using your leftovers with an amazing pot pie. You're putting a new twist on meatballs and spaghetti. You're making the best chili ever with a new method, a new one every night. You're making new exciting dishes like pork adobo or a, a creamy seafood au gratin. And these are all the ideas that you're going to get in my brand new Dinner Done course. Dinner Done is one of the largest collections of videos that I've assembled since web cooking classes in 2009 and I wanted to unveil it today and introduce you to it as one of my VIP followers and members. Dinner Done is designed to give you all the cooking methods. Dinner Done is designed to give you all the cooking methods along with the creative ideas so you can get dinner done quickly and easy, easily no matter what you eat. This online course first focuses on the three most used cooking methods. Direct heat methods like stovetop saute and oven broiling. Indirect heat methods like oven roasting and steaming. Plus combination heat methods like braising and stewing. Then from each of those methods comes 36 videos that will give you creative ideas from all over the world. These full length, beginning to end, no camera tricks or fancy editing, these cooking sessions will have us cooking together in the kitchen. And you'll also see that I make mistakes too, but you'll get to see how I fix them. Uh, you know I'm not a fan of the old stand and stir thing, so this isn't about you just watching me cook. With each dinner done meal, I'll explain the cooking method I'm using, why I've chosen that method for the ingredient, and the steps needed to make it really get great. And remember, we always serve on warmed plates. You'll see that also. So here's a quick taste of what you'll get dinner done in the very near future. First, using the direct heat cooking methods, beef stroganoff over egg noodles, beef broccoli fried rice, cold spicy Szechuan noodles, a peanut coconut beef satay, cocoa mole chicken, a honey mustard chicken cordon bleu, chicken marsala, French chicken Rochester, lobster Newburgh, seared ahi tuna, my balsamic reduction scallops and this incredible rum burr blanc over mahi mahi. Oh my God, it's so good. Then we move on to indirect heat. And like I said, meatballs and spaghetti in a new way. Roasted cranberry rice stuffed pork tenderloin. Chicken black bean burritos. We do this really cool spinach goat cheese stuffed chicken. Uh, chicken parmesan, no fry oil. We don't we don't deep fry or pan fry things. Uh, do a great turkey tetrazzini for leftovers. Uh, the perfect pot pie crust and filling I mentioned. We do true Maryland crab cakes. You know I'm an expert. As well as Baltimore coddies, the potato cod cakes. Oven fried shrimp. Again, no oil in the oven. Nice, get rid of all that fat. Uh, we do a mahi-mahi with a Cajun cream sauce creamy sherried seafood au gratin. We do a coquille Saint-Jacques, 
This is the gluten-free scallop dish. And oh, the bubbly au gratin potatoes that we do in little individual ramekins. This is going to change the way that you serve side dishes in the future. But then we got to move on to braised and stewed items in combination heat. The Filipino pork adobo that we do is so good. A hunter style pork chaucer. We do a ropa vieja, chef Todd style. Uh, you'll see my best chili method so you can make up your own. Uh, we do the Scottish beef stew with a barley thickener. Uh, my chicken tikka moor salad, coconut curry, uh, a paella that I made the other night. It was so good. The national dish of Spain. Uh, we touch on etouffee versus jambalaya versus gumbo, uh, a combo cooked salmon uh, with a risotto rice method. And then we even apply combination heat to vegetables, doing a combo cook on crunchy Brussels sprouts and spicy, chars, se- spicy charred Szechuan beans. <sighs> Does that not inspire you or make your mouth? water like it does mine. Look, I know uh, it, you looked at at least one of those photos and you thought I could do that. What a great idea. Except I, you know, I would change the chicken to tofu or something. If you're saying that great, your creativity is getting charged up already. And this creativity creating course has 36 awesome, inspiring ideas to get dinner done. And you know, if you think about it, it's not just 36. It's more like 72 uh, or 108 uh, or 144 or 180, some multiplier of 36. Because if you think about this, you make each of the meals that I show you with two different foods or three different foods or four or five different foods. And then the ideas multiply chicken burritos, beef burritos, shrimp burritos, one burrito idea, and a three times multiplier using the formula I showed you. If you love my chili method that I show you in this course, then it's beef chili, chicken chili, black bean chili, mushroom chili. It's a four times multiplier. Do you see how I say that this is a multiplier. This formula is a multiplier. I show you how to do it. I show you exactly what to do it do to, and it sparks ideas. And like I said, that's what I want for you. And my dinner done program is going to be added to my online store for $199 today, but I'm so proud of this program. I believe so strongly that this is the answer that so many have been asking me for. I have to try to get it into as many kitchens as possible. It's the answer. I know it. It's the key to the formula. Cooking methods plus creativity equals endless variety. The variety is great. We agreed. Everybody loves a variety. The methods are learnable. Anybody can do it. But the creativity has eluded you. That's why I decided to do this. That's why I decided to make a great offer so you can get started with it right away. So during this class, I'm going to do what I love to do. I'm going to cut the price in half and add a bunch of free bonuses to double the value. Double the value at half the price. Now that's creative, right? Get dinner done today for only $99, the introductory price, and also take advantage of these great free bonuses. Uh, Look, I don't know about you, but I'm really proud, really proud when I get dinner done especially if it's really good, like that paella I made the other night. I was really proud. I wanted to wear it on my chest like a Superman logo. Not the, not the paella itself, just the idea, you know, like, like a Superman logo. Let's do that. Let's do it. Let's, let's all get really creatively proud with our dinner done Superman t-shirts. I love it when we all have the same t-shirt. It makes us one big cooking family. So I'm going to include the dinner done t-shirt for free as a, as the first bonus, not the only, when you join my brand new program, it's a $30 value, but I want us to look really cool while we create together. Uh, look, we also talk a lot about sauces in the dinner done course, and I demonstrate the most important mother sauces, bechamel and velote. But that doesn't mean you don't want to get creative inventing new sauces too. So I'm going to include my mother sauces family tree downloadable guide. Find the mother sauce that you'd like to make, then look up the variations to make your own small sauce. Uh, The last S in that the longer formula was about seasonings, you remember? So I'm going to help you make those decisions with my spice teams guide. You can add flavor and travel around the world when you start to create flavor profiles in your cooking. 
Bonus number four is a really popular video that is no longer available to the public. It is now only available in the Dinner Done curriculum. My kitchen prep day video was massive. This shows you what I do every six weeks or so uh, so that I can have the best ingredients for future meals that I'll be inventing. Kitchen prep day makes three non-pizza crusts to freeze, compound shrimp butter, roasted garlic paste, brine ginger, I think there's one or two other things. It's in real time, step by step, and you'll see how I make sure that I have the things I need in the future to be creative. So Dinner Done is selling for $1.99 regular price. When I add the t-shirt, the other bonuses, this course is worth well more than $250. But I know the higher the price, the less people are going to be able to use it. And that's why I've cut the price in half today. And I've added all those free bonuses. So you'd make this decision right now. Well, we're both excited to see you get started. Dinner Done is a 36 video collection that cannot be seen anywhere else other than this membership. And once you get dinner done, you own it for a lifetime. There are no subscription fees, no annual renewals. It is a one-time purchase and you get dinner done forever. So today during this class for only $99, plus the dinner done t-shirt, spice team's guide, mother sauce's tree, and the kitchen prep video, which is now only in this course. Those are all free bonuses. Uh, you should do it now. You, you should go to getdinnerdone.com slash start. Honestly, I think I've done it. <laughs> I have finally figured it out. After all these years of teaching, I have always wondered what the missing piece was. I've been changing people from recipe followers to carefree cooks for years. They stop listening for the oven to beep. They, they stop looking at the clock. They now cook with dependable methods and they focus on the effects of heat on food. But what was missing was the ideas. I mean, not everybody has the creativity. I get that. But it is a gift that I have. I, I have the gift of creativity and that's why I want to share it with you. So go to getdinnerdone.com slash start. Oh, and don't forget everything I ever offer you comes with my 100% 30-day money-back guarantee for any reason. You don't dig it. You don't get any new ideas. It's just not for you. You get your money back. No questions asked. Oh, maybe I'll have one question though. I'll probably ask, hey, what's for dinner? <laughs> Got any new ideas? Oh, sorry. That, that's, that's two questions. I didn't mean to be snotty. Hey, look, cooking with dependable methods gives you confidence. Confidence sparks your creativity, and this combination gives you endless dinner ideas. So use the methods, copy me for the creativity part, and you get dinner done. Hey, thanks for being with me today, everyone. I, I really appreciate your spending your time with me here every Tuesday. I wish we could go even further. I, I would love to talk all day about good food and cooking, but I just had a great idea for dinner. So I got to get going. Uh, hey, this is Chef Todd Moore reminding you that there's a method to your creative cooking success. Bye, everyone.